Hello YouTube. Today I'm gonna make a small review and unboxing of the Gigabyte X870E Extreme AI Top. I haven't seen any reviews on this motherboard yet, so I'm gonna do one. I'm gonna show what's in the box, what's included, and the features it has. So stick around for the review. So in the box, you get a manual. You get a G connector, makes connecting front panel headers much easier. You get a noise detection cable, used to monitor and analyze system noise levels. Two thermal probes, helps measure temperatures in different parts of your case. Two Velcro straps, useful for cable management. A multilingual insulation guide, just basic documentation and paperwork. That's my G connector wrapper. You get a pair of SATA cables, including one straight and one right angle SATA cable for storage devices. Some of your stickers. A USB to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack adapter for better audio performance has an integrated DAC inside. A magnetic AORS badge. Pair SSD thermal pads. Now for my favorite accessory, the DDR5 wind blade, which is a small fan that cools down the RAM. It's a cool and exclusive gigabyte accessory. Let me show you what it looks on the motherboard. It's pretty neat, huh? I really like it. Then we get a Wi-Fi 7 antenna with a new type of connector called 2T2R. It's a clip-on connector instead of SMA screw connectors and has a magnetic base. And a spare SSD thermal pad I forgot about. Now let's take a look at the bottom headers of the motherboard. At the bottom we have a front audio panel. We got an ARGB header, three TPM headers, Three CPU fan headers, two USB 2.0 headers, one USB 3.1 header, an extra system fan header, and a front panel header. Now if we take a look at the SSD heat sinks, the bottom one is a big chunky plate, which has a nice weight to it, has integrated thermal pads, and has ARGB. Those three pins right there are for the ARGB to connect to the electricity. It has an easy latch system, so it's just a clip-on, clip-off system. And it covers three SSDs at the bottom. The top one right here has the same latch system, covers a Gen 5 SSD. The PCI slot right under it is a 5x16, but I'll cover those after. Now looking at the sides part of the motherboard, we have also a pretty good selection of headers. We get a clear CMOS header, two temperature probe headers, two fan pump headers, four SATA ports, a sound detection header, a USB-C header, a small circuit to measure CPU voltages, an FHDMI port which permits you to plug in a case uh, display inside your case, a Necro system fan header, the 24 pin ATX, the debug LED and a power and reset button. On the top side of the motherboard we have a nice chunky CPU uh, heatsink with built-in fins inside and as per the headers from left to right we also have the four DIMM slots covering 256 gigs of RAM and DDR5 8600 and left to right headers are ARGB header, a reset header, a 12 volt LED header, a fan pump header, a CPU OPT header, a CPU fan header, and all the way to the right, we have a dual 8 pin CPU connector. Now for the rear IO ports that I'm gonna show right now, we have a very nice selection, especially for the Gigabit LAN. 
We have a Q Flash Plus button, a clear CMOS button, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A, an HDMI port, a USB 3.2 J2 Type A, two USB C four, USB 4, two USB 2.0, an antenna connector, a line out, front speaker out, a mic in, rear speaker out, an optical, and we have dual 10 gigabit LAN, which is pretty interesting because most motherboards nowadays only have 5 gigabit LANs. These come by pretty rarely. This motherboard features a high performance 1822 VRM setup, meaning there are 18 power phases dedicated to the CPU, 2 for the SOC, and 2 for the memory controller. Now I'm going to show you the bare motherboard with no SSD heatsinks on. So, looking at the motherboard right here with nothing on top, we have the Gen 5 SSD slot. Right here on the right, we have this easy latch button, and this is a button that you press to release the graphics card from the primary PCIe slot. Now going downwards, we have the primary PCIe 5.0, the Gen, the three, three Gen 4 SSDs at the bottom, the secondary PCIe 5x8 slot. If the bottom SSD is used, the third PCIe slot doesn't work. The bottom one, all the way down, is the PCIe 4x2 slot. So, so the AI top lineup of motherboard features a hardware ecosystem, integrates gigabytes optimized components designed for AI training workloads. The solution supports up to 405 billion parameter models while delivering enterprise grade performance in a regular household power system. Now let's talk about the pricing. In the US, this motherboard costs $799 US, but here in Canada it's a hefty $1169.99. That's a significant jump, and for that price, you're really paying for premium features high-end power delivery and advanced connectivity, but is it worth it? Well, I just got all the parts for my new build, and in the next few days, I'll be live streaming the entire build process. I'll be testing this motherboard, going over BIOS features, and seeing if it truly delivers the performance that justifies its price. So if you're considering this board, stay tuned for my upcoming videos where I'll put it to the test and find out if it's really worth the price. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss it.